Okay, so this is the XYZ workspace, um, and I'm inside Moto right now, um, but we're going to do the same thing when we do our perspective drawing. So this was just easiest for me to pull up and talk about XYZ. And also, uh, let's see, I'm trying to work off two screens here. Um, so here we go. We've got a uh, XYZ space. So in top view, um, Moto, for instance, I should say that different programs use the different, they call the different axes, uh, not always in the same direction, or label them not always in the same direction, but it's always the same 3D space, X, Y, and Z. And so here you can see X, Z, and Y. So in Moto's case, Y is up and down. And in the book, we reference uh, Z as up and down. Um, and Y is front to back. And X is the same. X is left, right. So if I go to the top view, it's just in Moto's case, the XZ. In the book case, it's going to be the XY. Um, but it, it really doesn't matter. It just defines a 3D space. And so we have a 3D object here, which is this airplane. And you can see I can tumble it around. And this is the same airplane that's used in the book as the underlay. What I want to do is explain how the views, I'm going to switch these back over to wireframe mode and turn off that. And so we just have the wireframe that um, we're going to be able to push and pull uh, a couple of uh, vertex points around and we're going to see how that affects our views. So the great thing about draft views or ortho, ortho views is that um, you can do drafting on them, meaning you can assign dimensions. So in our top view, our front view, and here our left side view, um, we could actually measure that and say, okay, well, it's exactly one, two, three, four, five, six, in this case, seven squares. So if I wanted to make this, you know, like uh, one by seven, right, I could actually measure what is that proportion. I could print it, I can grab a ruler, and I can measure it. But when I go to the perspective view, I can't. But the perspective view is the one that helps me to best understand the object. Whereas when we look at the other views, it's a little bit more difficult. So what I want to do is push and pull some points around and we're going to see how they change okay how it changes our perspective view so you can see that if I move the wings narrower right we get these short little stubby wings and you see that in the front view that's very visible and the top view of course and the perspective but the side view didn't change right look at the side view nothing's happening right because we move them in the same direction so this coordinate system of moving points around is really important because this is exactly what we're going to do when we draw. So for instance now let's move uh, vertically, increase the dihedral angle on those wings and you'll see the top view doesn't change. Okay, but now my side view does. So I can move in side view, right? Um, at the same time I can move in front view. I'm actually moving the same in all three views but since I'm moving in the vertical direction, the top view doesn't change. Let's see what happens if I move in the side view forward. Now I get a change in the top view and the side view, nothing in the front view. So this is how we're going to move around in space when we start 3D drawing, is we're going to move only in XYZ planes. We're going to connect a bunch of these draft views. Um, so we're going to draw just on a top view plane, we're going to draw just on a front view plane, then just on a left a side view plane for instance, then we're going to connect them with sections. Let's uh, let's reproportion our tail here. Let's make it a little bit narrower. Let's make it a little taller. Let's pull it back a bit. So see I'm changing the side view and you see what's happening in perspective. So, uh, most important thing to understand about this little example before we start trying to draw these side views in perspective, because that's the next jump, of course, is, right, and I'm just pulling some points around. Now you see there we saw it move, right, front view, top view, again nothing in the side view because I'm only moving it, right, in one plane at a time. And that's the easiest way to not get confused when we start drawing, is just move one plane at a time. 
Now, what's important, another thing that's important, I should say, is when we start doing this, our whole goal is to keep it simple by drawing one plane at a time. Let's turn back on this view. Okay, so we have our plane. We just want to draw and translate this side view. Right, The side view is easy to draw because it's not in perspective. Same with the front view, same with the top view. And you can make them all match, just like you see they all match here. Okay, the perspective one is the difficult one to draw. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this view much easier to draw by trying to focus and draw just one plane at a time. The first one we're going to do is the side view. Um, and we're just going to make it a shape, and that's going to follow immediately after this. So um, I think we should get into that. I just wanted to introduce you to the orth orthogonal uh, views, draft views as they're commonly called, views you can assign dimensions to, and then how all those views combine together to make a three-dimensional object in a perspective view, right? That's actually much better to communicate or much easier for people to understand what the actual object is than these draft views. So we really want to get to this perspective drawing and let's get into that first step of translating draft views into perspective. Okay, so now we've just seen how to um, understand orthographic views and how all the views are interconnected and how we can apply dimensions to them. Um, it's time to start jumping into perspective. And this is one of the first uh, important things to get correct. So let's start with, um, I'm going to just draw a basic rectangle up here at the towards the top of the page. So I'm just going to start with something basic, just uh, no dimensions, but I'm just going to take and we're going to do a side view first. And let me just make sure this is nice and perpendicular. So using a parallel rule. And so I'm just going to run that out like so. So we have a basic side view. It could be a top view, but it basically it's just one plane. It's not in perspective. It's a draft view. So it's an orthographic view, just like we saw inside Moto. And I'm going to draw a, a curve inside this box. And so let's just start. Let's, uh, let's keep this first one relatively simple. Go up tangent to there and something like that across to the back and then I'm going to go down a bit and let's do a little reverse curve like this. Now the reason this is so important is because of foreshortening and um, meaning this lesson is so important. So this is really in reference to page 85. And actually, I just caught, when I was looking down 85 before recording this tutorial, at the end of step one, there's a little sentence there that doesn't quite make sense. I'll have to fix it on a reprint, but for now, um, where it says, but the rectangle must always divide evenly into squares. It doesn't have to divide evenly. That was a mistake. Um, you, what you want to do is use the square as a unit of measure. So I've drawn that side view, and I want to put this side view into perspective. So I'm going to take a circle guide. Um, let's have a circle template here, and I'm just going to use it. See if I get lucky here with the dimension. Looks like this one's fairly close. Okay, so if I draw a circle, that's also just like measuring a square. And we're going to use that over and over and over again to help us in perspective. Okay, so I just found the dimensions, the proportions of one square using a perfect circle. So what I want to do now is I want to multiply that into the distance. So how do we do that? Well, think back to the earlier in the book. Of course, we just divide it. And run the center of the square out inside view. Okay, go through either corner, 
again through the middle, which you guys are all pros at doing that now. Okay, and that's how I can establish the proportion. Or conversely, I could, if I had an ellipse guide or a circle template, I could just take the same circle and just repeat it right over and over again. Or I can use the multiplying method. Either way, I get the same result. So there's the point, there's the circle. There you have it. So that's basically what we want to do. So, or I could just measure it in this case. So I could also use my equal spacing dividers. And uh, let's say I go every even one. So uh, let's go two, four, two, four, six, eight. Okay, so those are my squares now. So what I want to do is just finish with these squares. So what I meant by that first paragraph there was that take your rectangle and divide it into squares with even squares across the shape. It doesn't have to always end in a perfect square, of course. So you see this one is over a little bit. So we've got one, two, three, four squares, and we're a little bit beyond. So now I want this curve in perspective. But I want to make sure that the plane that I draw is properly foreshortened in this space. So how do I do that? Well, a great way to establish your view is to start with an ellipse. So let's do something like this. I have a 30 degree ellipse template. And I'm actually going to use the ellipse to help me pick out my view. So I start to think about well, how much of the side do I want to see? What's the, am I looking from above? Then the minor axis is going to tip a little bit, so we're looking down at the ellipse. Um, if it's more parallel to the horizon line, that means right our eye level has dropped. So I'm going to say, well, I'm slightly elevated eye level, and I'm going to make this my first square. And let's start with something like this. Actually, slight, only slightly elevated. So I use the ellipse guide. Okay. And I mark the minor axis, and then I'm going to locate it like that. Now I'm going to run out to the right vanishing point. And when I do this, I'm just going to draw a tangent to the bottom. And I'm going to sort of match the, the angle here a little bit. So I kind of an, or I tip it up a little bit. It doesn't really matter. What you need to do is just draw a line tangent to the bottom, draw a vertical. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to go this way. We'll just keep it a simple plane. I'm just going to draw two tangent lines to the top and bottom. Where those connect or hit tangent, that's my true vertical for my drawing. So that's my true vertical. So it could be slightly tipped on your page, which is fine. Okay, it doesn't, is, but that would go up and hit 90 degrees to my horizon. What I really care is just about a foreshortened plane, and the foreshortened is being foreshortening is being determined by the degree of my ellipse. So what I want to do now is take this line, and I want to draw one parallel to it, tangent to the front, and another line parallel to it, tangent at the back. So I'm just doing two-point perspective. This minor axis going to the left finishing point. These guys going to the right vanishing point. Okay, and let's now divide. Like so. Corner to corner. All right, there's my foreshortened center. And now I need to go another line to the right vanishing point. Easy way to do this is just go here find the middle, or you can measure it with a ruler, or you can just eyeball it. When we start free sketching later, of course, we'll just do all this freehand. But when we're doing these constructions, it's a little easier to use tools. Okay, and now let's multiply. What I'm trying to get is I'm trying to get a foreshortened, and don't look at this vertical, look at the vertical you established with your ellipse. 
because my grid is a little bit tilted on the page, but that's fine. But I want to make sure all that stuff lines up. So the grid is correct. And what I need is four squares, foreshortened in perspective. Okay, I find my vertical again. Back over to here. Okay, there we've got it. This is, uh, there's one square, and then two, three, four. Okay, now I can start to look for alignments inside that grid. So what I want to do is look at this. I want to say, well, I know it starts tangent here. Let's see, where does it cross? I can center this a little bit. Well, I'm going to leave some. We'll stay, you know, we'll stay up there, and then we'll move back over here and do another sketch. So I've got, uh, here's the center, and it looks like it crosses... Uh, let's see, if I just estimate a little bit less than a quarter, so what, what I like to do is just estimate. Start here at a half, same spot, and then just estimate my foreshortened quarter, and then a little bit ahead of that, so there's one point. Okay, and then we go up here, the middle quarter, a little bit above halfway of that. So I go to this line here, which is this one, and I go estimate halfway, estimate a quarter, Right, so that's halfway, that's a quarter, it's just a tick above that, so there's my point. And where does it hit tangent? Hits tangent just ahead of this line, which is this one. So right about, uh, roughly right about there. And let's see, where does it cross this? So I go back to my halfway, halfway again, quarter above that. So I go halfway, quarter, a little bit above that. Crosses here about halfway on that about halfway there. And let's see, we got to add a little bit. How much do I add? Well, we could divide this, if we want, in half and in quarter. A little bit less than a quarter of a square, it looks like. So if you wanted to multiply, you could. Um, all right, if you wanted to do another one, or you could just say, well, uh, all right, let's be accurate. Let's, let's do it this way. Let's add a fifth square, which would be out there. But let's divide this. Last square, okay, and that's, let's see, let's go this way. Okay, that's foreshortened halfway. If you want, you could just estimate that on the other side. That's foreshortened, just make it a little bit less and then we set a little bit, a little less than a quarter. So if that's a half, that's a quarter, so a little bit less. So here's the end of our plane, like so. In fact, I do have this orange pencil around here. Why don't I just outline this a little bit? Okay, so this is our foreshortened one square by four squares perspective plane right there. So that is this. Okay, and now I just want to draw the curve in there. So I'd found some points already. Um, I know that this guy's going to sort of continue down as a smooth curve. The end is, oh, it's roughly about half the halfway of the height. So it's quarter of the overall height. So I find a point there. I know it's kind of sloping downward a little bit, and let's find, let's see, there's halfway, there's a quarter, so it's somewhere in between a quarter and a half of the third square. So that would be half, that would be quarter, and it looks like we're right about there. Okay, now we can draw the curve. So let's draw the curve. Uh, start at the front, I know it's gotta go up. Nice full curve right through here, but see how foreshortened that curve is becoming? Much, much straighter. And then I'm going to get through here and I'm going to hit tangent right there. And keep this thing straight. Okay, go up through. 
through here. And now I've got to hit tangent and see sort of I kind of drew lightly there before I hit, right before I drew that line. And then I'm going to go through here down to there. So always look ahead to where your curve is going to go. Okay. And straight down the back. And forward. And I'm going to hit here. So what I, sometimes I like to do is I like to draw another line up here that is parallel, right? to the ground line and make another little box just so I can see the angle of that, right? Because it's you can mislead yourself in here. It's very easy to get confused. So if I add another guideline, which would be something about like this in perspective, all right? And then here's that new box that we just drew up there. And what I want to do is, say, oh, look, it's a little bit above halfway through here. So that sets the angle. It's nearly a straight line from there to there. So it just arcs a little bit. So I know I've got to get down to there before I curve. So I'm going to come out of here, go here, and then a slight curve back to that point. And that helps me to set that angle because it's quite easy when trying to draw in perspective to get this to go up a little bit and not even be going at all in the right direction. So. It's quite an easy mistake to make. And then it's uh, nice and flat on the bottom, so let's just spin this guy around. And I'm just going to make that line a little bit heavier. You see, it's easier for me to draw away from my body. Um, and a lot of times I spin it upside down because if my hand tends to make a positive curve there, if I go here, it's going to be negative. Yeah, I could have done it either way. Doesn't really matter, but sometimes it's easier to put my arm on the pad. Here I'm off, sort of off the edge of the pad. All right, let's um, let's do one more in a different perspective angle, and that will wrap it up for uh, placing a uh, draft view, an ortho view, into perspective. Okay, I've got a much larger ellipse guide here, and I'm going to use. Uh, I've got a 15 degree this time, and I'm going to set my view. And we're going to do sort of a low eye level um, with like the horizon right through the minor axis. So let's um, let's start here, and I'm going to do like a huge ellipse. Mark the minor axis, okay, and draw it through my ellipse. Okay, and now let's set my convergence. I can do slow convergence, I can do fast convergence. Doesn't really matter. Um, just matters that it's even, top and bottom. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna say this actually is the horizon line. So I'm gonna set my vertical perpendicular to that line, which is the minor axis. They're just they're coincidentally in the same spot. Now, the only thing that matters now is I want to match the convergence. So um, that's where these guys are handy. Or a ruler, right? You just have to take and repeat. Or you know what? Just take a piece of paper. I do this a lot as well. You don't have to have those you know, things. You can just grab a, an old drawing lying around or whatever and um, just do a tick mark and a tick mark and then just go straight up in the same position and transfer that mark. Above. So post-its are good for that, or any scrap of paper lying around. Let's draw the top line, tangent to my ellipse, like so. All right, now I have a new square, foreshortened in perspective, using an ellipse guide, all right, which I know is a square, because I know a square is perfectly around a circle, and I know a circle in perspective is an ellipse. So we use a little bit of deductive reasoning there to be, you know, convinced and, and assured that that is a square in perspective. So now let's do our foreshortening trick by multiplying this back into space. 
right? Find my vertical. Now there's all sorts of ways you can make this foreshortened grid that's one by four, right? You can do it in a computer program. You can do it the way I'm doing it right now. Um, I like to use the ellipse when, when just freehand sketching because ellipse guides, right, you have a whole mess of those templates and it's really easy to just grab one and uh, set up your view and you know that it's a square in perspective. So when freehand sketching, I tend to use those ellipse guides a lot um, as my way to draw squares in perspective. And squares in perspective is what helps us to draw objects or planes, right, uh, properly foreshortened, which is the key when we start drawing these things in perspective. So in this one, let's reverse the view. Let's make this the back, right? Like we're looking at this from this angle um, in perspective. And let's find those points. So we just have to repeat the same sort of steps. We know that the curve's gonna start here. It's gonna come here, and this is gonna be the back of this. This end of it is gonna go there. So repeat our same steps. Um, you can add any additional lines you want. So if you really wanna find the foreshortened center of that last square, let's go ahead and find that. There's the center. And, and I decided, oh, it was a little bit less than a quarter. So at this point, you can probably just estimate there's a quarter, a little bit less. So there's my first point, which was right here. And let's look for point two was a little bit, let's see, about a half, about roughly a quarter on the first line. So if that line is that one, sorry, marked it a little bit out of frame there. Okay, then we go here. I just estimate a half, estimate a quarter, roughly right about there. It was just a tick above. I was going to hit tangent just ahead of this line. So that puts me right about here, roughly. And let's see, about half, a quarter, a little bit above. So I could go on this line, half, quarter, a little bit above. And this one was about halfway, so roughly right about there. And then I need to add this little bit right here. Okay, Add, adding that on to extend my square. So I'm going to, let's see, let's go forward. How should we do this? You know what, let's divide this first because it's really I only need a quarter. So let's first, let's divide that into a half. Okay, then let's divide that into a quarter. Sorry, into a half again. And that'll be a quarter of the overall. So there's my position. Right here, quarter. There's the point I want. Now I can bring that through the middle like it's a super tall, skinny little rectangle. And I found a quarter foreshortened properly out into perspective. So there's the little add-on bit. That's this line right here. Okay, and let's see, that was roughly about a half. This was like a little bit above, a little bit below. So that's gonna be that line. Or just make a nice smooth line. If you know if you have a nice smooth line here, you know you're going to have also a nice smooth line in perspective. So don't make so many points, and if you get them slightly off, don't draw a wobbly line because you're trying to hit your points. Know that your points are a little bit incorrect, and still draw a nice smooth curve. And then we're going to go straight down this. We're going to go to about halfway of this height, which is roughly there. Um, at that position, I'm going to also estimate halfway down at this end. I'm going to draw, just guess at a guideline here. And I went, let's see, the middle of this square. Estimate that, one quarter, and looks like my point is right here. There's that new plane inside here. And look how different it looks in this perspective than it looks in draft view, in ortho view, or in the 30 degree. So this I used a 30 degree ellipse guide, and here I'm using a 15 degree. 
So we've changed our view by 15 degrees relative to that plane and see how much more foreshortened it looks. So how much taller and how much shorter. You imagine if we keep moving and moving and moving around this, it just becomes a straight line. Same height, just you know, squeezing and seeing less and less and less of it. So we go from this, which is full orthogonal draft view. We could put dimensions on that and cut it out. It would be the exact shape we want. But if we spun that around, we start seeing these sorts of things, which is the really first big step into going into perspective. Let's see. Um, and that's why we're doing it and we're spending some time on it. Let's see, that was roughly about halfway at about here. So the last sort of point just to set my angle and then to get that curve. All right, we'll do that line first since we're working that area. So now I'll just freehand all the rest. All right. So i to try to keep that slightly in frame for you. All right, so we're going to leave from here and go up through there. So this curve, it's very foreshortened. And then we have a slight curve up to there, but a nice smooth curve. And what you start to see, let's see if I can move my body around a little bit to uh, make this an, a nicer curve without moving my pad. Okay, and then here we're going to go straight up. I'll make that a little bit heavier. Could use the straight edge, which would probably be smarter. Okay, let's make this line on the bottom a little heavier. I know that's going to the front. Like so. And then this is going to go up from here and double check. I'm going, let's see, a little bit ahead of a quarter. So that was a half, that was a quarter, a little bit ahead. And look at what happens to this curve. All right, getting super foreshortened, which is making it so much flatter. And now I've got to pre-visualize this. It's going to go up, it's going to go through here, I'm going to touch tangent to the top at this point, and then it's going to curve downward through there to here. And see, it doesn't jive exactly with my points, but I don't sweat it. I just try to make a nice smooth curve. So let's go and do that line. And that will finish this tutorial on transferring a side view into perspective. And of course, you can imagine what we're going to do next is we're going to jump to the next few pages and there will be a summary of this chapter um, on the next uh, tutorial, next video, which will go all into section drawing, which is what we're going to do next, is we're going to draw multiples of these, right, in different alignments, and then we're going to connect them together with a skin, and that's where we're going to start to draw XYZ sections and make complex surfaces accurately in perspective. But you can't get there without mastering this step first. So that's a summary of page 85. Um, and hope you enjoyed it. And let's get into uh, section drawing. So read the rest of the chapter on section drawing. Then there'll be a, a summary video of that um, next up. Get to it.